Alright everybody and welcome to our first show. We got the American Speaker Radio. So we hope you enjoy that. And uh, so uh, stick around and enjoy the interview folks. And uh, here it is. Welcome to this week's interview, and from Phoenix, Arizona, this week we have American Standards. How are you doing, guys? We're doing good. Doing good. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you uh, introduce yourselves for us? Cool. My name is uh, Brandon Kellum, and I do vocals for American Standards. I'm Bruce Garonsky. I do play guitar. I'm Stephen Mandel, and I play bass. We also have uh, Mike Cook on drums. It's not with us uh, today. Oh, okay. Well, it's good that you guys are there for my for a uh, my first question again. Uh, I'll cut out again. We are a little bit further that time, but no, uh, is it farther, further? Uh, no question. Uh, maybe you can listen to the whole time. You, you so yeah, we can't hear you. Uh, uh, what else, uh, has it always been a passion for you as far as a musician goes? I mean, uh, has it started when you were yeah, a kid? For, uh, me, I know? think it was uh, probably not since I was a kid, but definitely earlier on, like around middle, uh, middle school, early high school is when I really started getting into music. Um, I still remember going to the store and buying a Volder Display of Power of a Pantera and uh, just thinking this is what I want to do. And uh, surprisingly, been doing it now for about 12 years. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, I was I was in seventh grade when I got my first guitar, and I've just been kind of fiddling with it ever since. Yeah, when I um, I was about 12 years old. I moved from New York to Arizona, and uh, there was that awkward phase of getting to know new people and stuff like that in school. So I just kind of kept to myself initially and played guitar and just kind of messed around with that stuff. You know, I listened to a lot of Corn, a lot of Slipknot. A lot of Pantera, stuff like that. Oh, uh, yeah, gotcha. It's, it's cutting again a bit. Free influence. Any, um, yeah, take it, Corey. Oh, geez, I mean, we. I think we kind of touched on some of them. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean we, we just... Kind of influences just from everything we listen to right now. I just, I mean, just kind of nostalgia, like Slipknot, Corn, uh, Pantera. We just kind of feed off of that and just kind of make our own twist on it. Yeah. A lot of the old school punk stuff, I think when I was younger, I wasn't into it as much. But uh, I was a kid with uh, the Blue Liberty Spikes, and everybody thought I was into punk rock, but I was into metal. Now as I get older, I'm definitely much more into old school punk rock, uh, Sex Pistols and Casualties and um, Nerve Agents. Things like that refused uh, when it started getting more into hardcore phases. Uh, so those were all huge for me. Um, uh, uh, do you have any CDs out? Yeah, Anything we've got like uh, actually, yeah. well, I guess you could say three CDs. Our first one was more of a, a home studio recording. We had uh, three songs on it, um, and we just self-distributed it. We pretty much had Corey the madman behind all the art, um, spray paint, like 500 sleeves, hand wrote all the lyrics, um, and pretty much passed it out to anybody that would give it a listen. Um, after that, we actually released something distributed by Victory Records called Still Life, uh, which was a seven-song seven song, right? yep. seven EP um, that had some distribution by uh, Victory Records. Um, after that, we dropped the label and we released uh, The Death of Rhythm and Blues, which was another EP, a five-song EP. Uh, we're currently working on Hungry Hands, which will be out here in about two months, which will be our, I guess, fourth CD, you can say. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, it's cutting me again. This <laughs> uh, uh, is where can we get your music? I mean, could you could we go on your website to do it? Can we get it from Amazon? Maybe you can yeah, mention us some things it's like all, that. It's all available um, online in some select stores. So you got Amazon, uh, Rhapsody, Spotify, 
iTunes, um, Bandcamp. Uh, if you go through Bandcamp, really, that's the best way for us. Yeah. Uh, the reason being, you go through iTunes and some of the other online retailers, uh, they're taking a huge cut, sometimes 40% of uh, everything. So everything you go through Bandcamp goes right back into the band, which then goes right back into touring and recording. Uh, so for the Bandcamp, it's uh, American Standards, but Standards is ST. Ndrd.bandcamp.com, or if you go to the Facebook, facebook.com slash American Standards, uh, you'll find all the information on there. Well, um, looks like we're just about out of time, but we want to thank you guys for stopping by, and um, if you ever have anything new you want to promote, or if you have a new album, or just anything you want to do, just let us know, and we'll be glad to help you uh, promote it. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, thanks a lot, and we'll be right back. All right, well, that was uh, American Standards interview. Sorry about the problems there with the uh, the audio cutting in and out. Sometimes these reporters do that. But anyway, uh, we got two more songs in a row from American Standards. Uh, the first one's called The Engine and The Engineer, and then after that, The Dead Man's Victory. So um, we hope you enjoy it. Come on.
two in a row from American Standards. So we hope you enjoy the pass. And we got three more for you from American Standards right now. The Burden of Ink and Interlude and Missouri Relapse. And be sure to check by uh, the morgue website, themorgue.wix.com forward slash uh, the morgue. And uh, we'll set you up. Right now, here's another American in Standards. The Radio.
well, that does it for me on this episode. I'm on the show Bim TV and Paul TV, so you can check me out there on YouTube. And also, um, uh, if you uh, want to send me an email, uh, just go to Paul and WIYA.com.au, and we'll put you on there. It doesn't matter what kind of music you like. So, anyway, I'm out of here. We'll see you next time.